Many vital body functions serve to maintain a state of homeostasis or balance, for example, temperature regulation or maintenance of blood pressure. The same principle applies at the level of a single cell. Proteins, such as enzymes, are the workhorses inside all cells and they're fundamental for normal growth and renewal. Cells work hard to maintain a healthy balance of proteins. This important regulatory role is carried out mainly by the Ubiquitin Proteasm System, or UPS, and this is the subject of a drug discovery program by the Scottish Enterprise Ubiquitin Proteasm System Program. It's the responsibility of the UPS to seek and destroy damaged or faulty proteins or those simply surplus to requirements. The UPS maintains the right proteins in the right amounts at the right time. If the system fails, the result can be disease. The UPS can malfunction in two ways. It can become overzealous, so that useful proteins are destroyed inappropriately, or it can be restrained in some way, and potentially harmful proteins may build up to toxic levels. An imbalance in the UPS system is thought to occur in common diseases like Alzheimer's, in viral and bacterial infections, in many cancers, and also inflammatory diseases like rheumatoid arthritis. There are thousands of different proteins in any cell at any one time, so the UPS has a tough job to keep them under control. The UPS marks a target destined for destruction by using a ubiquitous small protein found in all cells, aptly named ubiquitin. In essence, proteins tagged with ubiquitin are given a very visible death sentence. There's a lot of ubiquitin present in cells, but it can't attach itself to proteins at random. It is a highly regulated and controlled system to avoid any unwanted protein degradation. First, it must be primed for action by an E1 ubiquitin activating enzyme. This process also requires energy in the form of ATP or adenosine triphosphate. The activated ubiquitin is then transferred from the E1 onto a second enzyme called an E2 ubiquitin conjugating enzyme. This enzyme acts as an escort for ubiquitin to its next destination, the E3 ligase enzyme. The E3 enzyme acts as a platform on which the target protein substrate and the active E2 ubiquitin complex can meet and interact. The E3 enzyme is extremely fussy about exactly which E2 enzyme and which protein can interact. The correct E2 enzyme loaded with activated ubiquitin can move and position itself correctly on the E3 ready for action. When both protein and ubiquitin are loaded onto the E3 enzyme, they're brought close enough together for the ubiquitin to be transferred to the target protein substrate either directly from the E2 or through a short hop via the E3. This process can be repeated several times to create a polyubiquitin chain on the protein. The creation of this chain is the death knell for the protein. It provides a clear signal to the cell's waste disposal unit, the proteasome, to start work. The proteasome binds and removes the polyubiquitin chain and unfolds the protein. The protein is threaded through the proteasome chamber where it's chopped up into building blocks to be reused for the synthesis of new proteins. The ubiquitin can also be recycled. As we've seen, the UPS is a critical process in controlling cell function. When protein degradation gets out of balance, disease results. We believe that better understanding of how the system works could help us develop drugs to treat many devastating diseases. Currently, there is one drug on the market which takes advantage of the ubiquitin proteasome system, Velcade, which is approved for the treatment of a subset of cancers, inhibits the proteasome itself and leads to the destruction of cancer cells through a build-up of toxic proteins. However, this inhibiting action is relatively non-specific. Exactly how the UPS process works is the subject of intensive research. Looking at the E3 enzyme more closely, we can see that it's a complex structure which may have different mechanisms for identifying and capturing different target protein substrates. We know that in humans there are two types of E1 enzyme, 
approximately 60 types of E2, and between 6 and 800 types of E3. In other words, potentially nearly 90,000 different combinations. The program is concentrating on E3, which uses the F-Box connection. The aim is to identify where drugs could be developed either to amplify or block the ubiquitin proteasome system so we can arrest diseases caused by the system malfunctioning. What we've shown you is a simple diagrammatic version of how the ubiquitin proteasome system is believed to work. In reality, the structures are far more complex. The Scottish Enterprise program uses a combination of modern chemistry approaches to develop chemical and peptide libraries enriched for UPS activity. A key goal is to identify lead molecules with activity against several prioritized targets of interest and develop these into novel, drug-like molecules with help from the pharmaceutical industry.